as you know, I have a thing for Chanel handbags. To my wallet, it is a completely lethal addiction, but it's something that I really love learning about, and I really love wearing these handbags. They are definitely my babies. Um, so if you want to see a full collection of all the handbags that I own, I did film that, so I will link that down below a few months ago. But of course, there is a new edition of my boy bag now, and it really has given me pause for thought as to what the difference is between all of my Chanel handbags. So that hopefully you can see some useful um, differences between them and just kind of hear my thoughts on what my favorite things about them are um, and then differences in purpose and style as well. For those of you who do like designer handbags like I do, um, I really hope that you enjoy this because it's giving me a lot of pleasure to sort of share my bags with you and share my thoughts about them in what is hopefully a useful way. So let's get right into it. Because I have five, I cannot hold them all at once. I would be like a Christmas tree with probably one around my neck as well. Um, so what I'll do is I will go through them two by two in increasing order of size. So from the smallest to the largest, and hopefully that will give you a useful idea of the differences in size between them as well as style. So to start off with, my two smallest Chanel handbags are my Wallet on Chain in caviar leather with gold hardware, and then my medium chevron handbag so this is a bit more of a unique one um, but it is a medium size just like the classic medium is with the regular square quilting um, and it's got silver hardware and it is in lambskin instead of caviar so two very very different bags um, and the sizes are actually also very different however what you can fit in them is surprisingly not all that different because this one also functions as a wallet so you do not need to carry a separate wallet like you do with this bag. Um, so it's got all the card slots on the inside. I will show you a brief little look at that. Um, I do have a Band-Aid and a Kleenex in there, so you'll have to forgive that. Um, it's also got a pouch on the back, but so does the medium. So that's something they have in common. Actually, all of the Chanel handbags I'm about to show you today all have the pocket on the back except for the boy bag, which does not have that as part of its style. Um, so the wallet on chain is definitely not for everyone. I think, however, that it's interestingly probably the bag that has the most dual different purposes. For me, I actually wear it either very casually in a very busy place, kind of cross-body, great for travel, I'll often like sling it over a coat or something like that cross-body and it feels very safe and close to my body so that it doesn't kind of bump into people. Um, so I like it for that and I also like it for very formal events. Usually what I like to do if I'm going to use it very formally is I will wrap the strap around like so, so that you get a shorter length and then the gold showing on top which is a little bit more dressy and you still have some length to go over your shoulder and it's a bit of a shorter evening handbag. There are tons of ways to wear this handbag so um, that's something I could make a whole video about but of course I think the most formal way of all perhaps even is to just carry it as a simple clutch with a strap tucked in. It fits all of your cards, some money, an iPhone, and a tiny bit of makeup, and that's it. Um, in fact, I actually struggle to fit my keys in here because I have quite a large key set. If I had to go back in time also, I would actually probably purchase this in lambskin instead of caviar leather. I've told you before in pretty much all of my other Chanel handbag videos, I do not adhere to the idea that lambskin is less durable than caviar leather. I think they actually just wear differently. So what will happen with caviar normally is you'll see some corner wear and some loss of structure, whereas lambskin tends to soften a little bit more nicely. It is a little bit more prone to scratches, but not anywhere near as much as people tend to say. So this handbag now, um, my green Chanel, is a year and a half old but it's not a new bag when I got it. It was in new condition, but already from, I think, 2008 or something like that. And the lambskin on it is in really pretty immaculate condition. It needs a bit of a wipe. I just took these out of my collection and showed them to you as they are. Um, so it might need a little bit of a wipe, but otherwise has no visible really corner wear or any kind of important scratches either. Nowadays, the medium does have a double flap, so it actually fits even less than this version does. Um, 
However, it's a nice open shape, so you can see in that way you can fit quite a bit. I would say in addition to what I told you I could fit in this bag, I could probably fit a pair of sunglasses um, and or a small camera um, in there as well, so long as I have a small wallet. Once you're trying to put a continental style wallet in this, it's not going to fit very much other than that. Out of the five, perhaps maybe this is still the one that's closest to my heart because it is so unique. So if I was a Chanel handbag, I would say I would probably be this one. It's probably largely because of the chevron style and the unique emerald color that surprisingly goes with almost everything in my wardrobe. I wear it year round. One of my favorite times of year to wear it, however, is Christmas because I think it's just so festive and gorgeous and perfect with a little holiday style dress in a jewel tone color. What I will do is I will link all the videos that I made for each of these bags when I got them. I mean, for some of them, there's quite a few videos on each bag. And in the original first video that I made for those bags, you'll be able to find the price. So if you do want to know the prices for these bags, they are available on my channel. I just don't want to go on about it because I know for some people it's kind of overwhelming to hear that. Um, and I fully understand that. So it's there if you want it, which is kind of how I like to handle things. Going up a size, we have my new boy bag, which is quite heavy um, because it's actually filled with my stuff right now. And then we have the medium that I just showed you. So you can see the size difference at first does not really seem all that huge. And this is the new medium boy bag, by the way. Um, so it is a slightly larger medium size than the original boy bag in medium, which was closer to what this is. However, the ultimate real difference, I think, in how much the boy bag fits, you can see at the side, because you normally don't want to be stretching out one of your classic flaps too much to fit a lot of stuff. You don't want to kind of put things to stretch it out this way. Um, so what happens with the boy bag is because it's so rectangular, you get a lot more room on the side of the bag to kind of fit your things. So you can probably fit about two more items in the boy bag over what the medium fits. It's still not a huge bag, um, so it's definitely good if you're not, you know, needing to bring everything under the sun or a large makeup bag. But what I find is that the nice thing about the boy bag is I can fit a little makeup bag with some powder, a few lipsticks, you know, some concealer, those sorts of good things, and some essentials like uh, maybe a little bit of toothpaste or something like that. That will kind of carry me through the day a little bit better than what I can fit in my classic medium. So that's kind of a real nice benefit of the boy bag. As you guys know, it's a very different, much more modern handbag. So the inside of the handbag is actually a fabric <laughs> instead of leather like it is for all of the other Chanel handbags. It doesn't have a double flap as well, which helps you to fit a little bit more. Very, very heavy hardware. That is, however, quite a bit more comfortable than it is on the other handbags because you do have this leather strap. I love the way the strap looks both long and short for this handbag, whereas with this bag, I tend to find actually that wearing it under the shoulder with the double strap is a little bit tight and uncomfortable, even though I'm 5'4", so I can imagine for someone taller it would actually be worse. So what I tend to do is wear it longer, unless I want it to look very dressy for a night out. It's kind of an interesting little detail. I think the strap makes a big difference to the Chanel handbag that you choose because that's ultimately how it's going to feel when you wear it. So that's something that I really am loving about the boy bag. However, it is a heavy bag, even though I have my stuff in here. Um, I know from past use that my classic medium is significantly lighter than this one. And you can see it as well, just in the size of the hardware. For me, gold versus sil silver makes a difference as to to how dressy it is but for the most part it's really a color preference so I like the way the silver looks with the green I wouldn't want it to be in gold and for this bag as well I like that the gold dresses it up a little bit more as well which I told you guys when I got it so you can see all about that in that video so for a jumbo I originally considered purchasing the new jumbo which is now a double flap and it's a very large imposing bag I may still get one someday. I do love the look of the bag. However, it's everywhere in Vancouver, which kind of was a bit of a deterrent for me to save up enough money to get it um, because I kind of felt like it wasn't all that special or unusual. So what I ended up doing is I purchased secondhand from another YouTuber, Mel Soldera, her old vintage flap in um, the vertical style. So instead of being the cross hatch quilting like my wallet on chain or my DST that you'll see in the minute, this one has 
vertical quilting in caviar leather. It's very rare to be able to find this bag in lambskin. However, it is out there. Again, maybe if I were to purchase it again, I might try and find one in lambskin. Although maybe the fact that it's caviar has helped it to survive over the years because I think this bag is actually from the early 90s. So it's a very old bag really. Um, I think by my standards, even though you can find vintage bags that are from the 60s, 70s, um, they really are pretty widely available and surprisingly um, survive pretty well through the ages. So this one actually has real gold plated hardware, which is why you can see, actually it's really interesting to be able to show this to you in this video. Can you guys see how the hardware on the vintage one is far more yellowy than it is on the boy bag, which is more of a white yellow gold? Um, so that's definitely a main characteristic of vintage flaps. The downside of that is because it's electroplated, you actually get a little bit of wear on it, so you start to see the silver underneath reveal over time, which gives it away as a vintage bag, which is not something that I mind because actually, maybe it's the European side of me, I love old things and I do not have any objection to their showing their age. Um, it's got a long, very wide zip pouch on the inside that fits a lot. This bag fits so much stuff. It's really great. Actually, I would almost argue that it competes with the GST in terms of what you can fit in it. Often will even carry a compact umbrella in it. So when you compare this to the boy bag, again, it's kind of funny. When I hold them together, it doesn't look like the vintage flap will fit a lot more than the boy bag, but it definitely, definitely does. Um, I think it's by virtue of being taller. It's quite slim on the sides, however, so you can't fit a lot of stuff that is bulky. It's more like you can fit a lot of smaller items into it quite comfortably. It also has a very large pocket on the back, which is great. Very oversized and jumbo, so it looks big on my petite frame, but I really love that. I think it looks so fab. Um, it's very easy to wear in the evening as well, just that bright, luxurious gold hardware really works well for the evening. I, however, do think that it is such a great bag for work. Um, if you're a little bit shy of carrying around a brand new spanking Chanel bag in your office, getting something that's vintage is somehow a little bit more demure. For a first time Chanel buyer, if you can find one that's in good condition and not too expensive because you don't want to be paying full Chanel prices for something that's older, so be careful you don't get ripped off, I think this is such a good option that I would really recommend to you if you're looking to make that first plunge. Now the GST to me, other than a Birkin, is kind of the ultimate career girl bag because it fits full-size documents. You can use it as a substitute briefcase. I actually in the past have carried this plus this and sometimes we'll just tuck it in as my wallet. However, my plan was to do that regularly when I bought these two bags, um, not too far apart from each other. The problem with doing that is the whole package, once you put everything together, is so extremely heavy that it can be a little bit uncomfortable. So I wouldn't say I do that that often. If you're a busy career woman, that's definitely an option that is out there for you. Um, I have to say this bag has not worn at all. It still looks literally brand new, even though it is almost two years old now. Um, part of that reason, however, is that to be fully honest, I do not use it that often. I don't use it as often as I thought I would, and I think it's because my preference is ultimately sometimes for a bit more of a medium-sized bag if I'm wearing my bag from day until night and having a full day out. This bag can be so difficult to fit in restaurants if you're going out. Um, you definitely need to plan to have one of those handbag hooks, and even then, the weight and size of it make it a little bit difficult to kind of tuck away under a table. It really ultimately needs its own seat. But it's such a beautiful bag that that's not something that I mind too much. You can fit a ton in here. It's got a huge back pocket, three sections, um, which ultimately helps to keep the bag very structured because it does have this middle section. It never really ends up having that slouchy tote look, even once the bag starts getting very old. Um, at least that's what kind of I've realized through my research. The inside, and then it's got this really nice, huge zip compartment that is perfect for a wallet or any other important possession that you're carrying around that you don't want people to be able to reach into. This bag does fit really well underneath the shoulder, especially once you've had it for a few months, and it does start to reduce in structure a little bit on the sides. Not a lot, not a scary amount, but a little bit. Kind of reserve it for important meetings or really
really busy days where I know I'm gonna have a ton of stuff on me that I need to keep but still look very glam and professional and fabulous. It's a tote, you can just fit your whole life in there and not worry about damaging the bag or um, not having everything on you that you need to conquer the world. So um, you can see a little bit of the size difference with the vertical flap and I think now you can kind of see my point that in size they're actually not so different that you can fit a hundred times more in this um, GST versus the vertical flap. Um, I think really the difference ultimately is documentation, which is much um, more comfortably fitted in the GST doesn't really fit very comfortably in the vertical flap. And that's it, you guys. We have gone through all five Chanel handbags that I've purchased. I didn't really want this video to end up being about playing favorites or telling you what to buy because depending on your lifestyle, any of these bags might be the right fit for you or even another bag entirely like a classic jumbo or something like that um, or even a smaller Chanel boy bag if you don't need as much stuff as I do then you might consider getting um, the small boy bag is gorgeous very glam but not terribly practical for my life little hint of the next bag that I'm going to get it's going to be a more casual version of this kind of working career girls bag and um, I'm looking for basically a casual briefcase. It's my next thing that I've kind of been saving up for. If you like this video and you would like to see more luxury handbag videos, then let me know with a like and a comment down below and make sure you subscribe for my next video on style. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!